Yeah, welcome to whatever the hell this is. I don't know. Um, I've been on Twitter all day, pretty much. Uh, either responding to people who don't know what MMT is or why Chris has it for not, uh, but yet not having the right or the, um, not, I can't say right because they have the right to add their opinion, but not having the, uh, the right opinion, the, the right view on what MMT is, stuff of that nature. Anyway. Um, Warren Mosler, who was actually the architect behind uh, MMT, uh, shared this, well, shared a few uh, things on Twitter today, and uh, obviously full credit to him as far as that part goes. But uh, let's see, this first one, uh, as you can see, is from 2020. Uh, from Reuters, apparently, uh, Trump told Saudi, cut oil supply or lose U.S. military support. Now, okay, so he's wanting them to uh, cut oil supply. What would that, that would make oil, cut oil, cut oil supply or lose US, yeah, that, that would make oil much more expensive. So he's manufacturing with that, the um, uh, price is going up. Uh, See, not there yet. Uh, where is this at? <laughs> oh, yes. And this another thing, uh, I believe, you know, maybe it could be from the same day. I, I didn't really check the date on it, but I know it's the same year, same month. Anyway, so just spoke to Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, who spoke with President Putin of Russia, and <clears throat> I, ex I expect and hope that there will be a cutting back of approximately 10 million barrels and maybe a substantial more, which, if it happens, will be great for the oil and gas industry. So, obviously, he's he, this is him manufacturing uh, oil shortage, uh, you know, stuff of that nature. Uh, let's see what else. And not that one. And this one, I just I just saw as well. Uh, so. If memory serves to be put bring back up, so he tells Saudi Arabia to cut back on uh, on oil or lose military support. This is what the, in Saudi Arabia did. They signed an agreement with Russia for that. I don't know about you, but that tells me that the war on Ukraine is, or the war through Ukraine against Russia is because of stuff like this. Because they signed a deal basically taking us out of the arms uh, deals of that sort. Um, this is why we can never vote for either party. Because they both do the same fucking thing. This is also reason why it's very important to learn stuff like modern monetary theory. And apparently, my mic is going off. So that's fun. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll try this more. Anyway, uh, maybe I don't have, Maybe I need to eat the mic. I don't know, but. This is one of the reasons why it's good and great to learn mon monetary theory because this kind of stuff, you, you know, as far as me, as for the overall economy, is good to learn it so that you can understand and not freak out and not listen to the talking heads. I was watching, first of all, uh, I was watching, uh, oh gosh, uh, a show that Steve Grumby was on earlier actually was taped a couple of days ago, but they but they just put up uh, the political something. I forget. I apologize for forgetting that. Anyway, but Steve but Steve uh, mentioned that uh, Peter Schiff was on uh, Jimmy Dore. I'm like, fuck! I didn't know that. So I went back and so I looked it up, and yeah, he was on there for about fifty five to fifty eight minutes. And I'm like. I I ha, I have uh, I don't know how long Stephanie Kelton was on the show, but it sure as hell wasn't 58 minutes. Anyway, so I look at it, I watch it, and I'm listening to Peter Schiff. First of all, I got I got an answer to my question, which was uh, that his his um 
his bank that he there was that he was running he had to close that down and she had to move on to something else um so now he's an employee of somewhere uh, of somewhere um anyway so and the one he doesn't mention that manufacturing is the reason why our supply our supply chain is messed up two he doesn't mention the fact that uh the companies that owe uh or the Fed, like tr like somewhere between twenty and twenty five trillion dollars in uh, debt. Uh, he doesn't mention the fact that they had to pay that back. Uh, three, he doesn't mention the fact that when they do that, that that's monetizing their debt. So that's what debt monetization is. Uh, four, um, he, he it is is interesting how, how he put this. He said. That we had to borrow from China, basically, but at the same time we spent we we print too much money. In my mind, I first of all, China cannot loan us money in our own currency. Uh, the reserves are basically for trading. Uh, let's see, five. He was given credit uh for the 2008 crash because he said like a 2006 or so there's there are people like um mike hudson who said 2000 uh, he's a mmt fringer if you if you will bill mitchell uh l randall ray said 2004 2003 so he's given credit where credit is not due he may have said it on fox and yes, someone and people that I follow, like Mike Norman, um, contradicted him and didn't believe him and all that stuff. So, I mean, Mike Norman, for his credit at that time, he's seen past that, and he's he did give uh, Peter Schiff his his credit on that. But at the same time, Peter Schiff has basically uh, he has formed a brand on his name around what the possibilities are, what could happen and not necessarily would happen. Um, then he was saying that, uh, oh shoot, he was saying something else. Um, anyway, so yeah, th then, then he was talking about how it was uh, more expensive for freight companies it wouldn't be so. It wouldn't be so expensive for freight companies if we had our own manufacturing and, uh, you know, like ninety five percent of our of the GDP, in the United States was manufacturing, uh, or not ninety five percent. Excuse me, at least sixty percent of it would, would be uh, manufacturing. Uh, he never said that. Uh, he never. He never said anything in regards to like the fact that. Um, he actually he did say one thing that 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 was correct as far in my, in my opinion he did say that companies would companies do uh borrow in order to uh buy more stock that he's correct on everything else he's just doesn't know what the hell he's talking about as far as i'm concerned um he was right on one thing one thing that happened for about two years give or take but because of what the because of what the Fed didn't do, because of what the government didn't do, we're, we were still in there until the pandemic, which means there was not enough deficit spending. What again? What does deficit spending do? And that means that, that the government spends through legislation uh, to give people money to be able to spend in the economy to prop up the economy until other things are able to get back on on their feet, like jobs. Uh, and, um, training for those jobs industries stuff like that um larry summers during that same time period had uh has said that he regrets not he regrets uh saying to uh not he regrets uh advising too little but then a week later uh, he, he was saying that uh that there was too much spending so he can't think so he can't keep his thoughts straight I've always said myself that, dev that deficits do, uh, are good as long as there are plenty of resources to buy it with. And we're only at 85% of, uh, of uh, GDP as far as uh, uh, economic growth or uh, uh, capacity to grow. We, 
we used to run at 95 and that 95 percent that and that is basically from what ronald ray said in the interview on macaron and cheese about a week or so ago um peter schiff also uh mentioned uh paul volcker who basically he admitted that because of the fact that volcker actually had raised the interest rates at 21 uh not 20 but 21 percent um that he basically ran out, he basically ran people out of business regards to investment banks and other things. So basically, in order to bring down bring down the inflation, he killed the economy. He you could do he could do other things that, that, that are involved in that, you know, like increase other things of capacity to allow people to be able to make money. Or actually, what I've been trying to say is wages should go up. As, as much as the cost of living does. If the cost of living, uh, say $5, the cost of living goes to about uh, 5% more, then you should automatically get a, fi- a $5 increase per hour. That would hopefully, at that, uh, at that rate, it, will a- it would actually allow people to be able to live without having to take out credit. Because that's basically what uh, financial crises are based on. Financial credit, loans and stuff of the nature either on housing or whatever the case may be credit maybe there'd be a credit crisis that's what that's what crisis uh that's what financial crisis have been based on in the past now we're going back to the to the credit crisis so if we had a jobs program job transitioning program because we do want a green new deal which would allow us to uh, be uh, independent from gas and oil, and allow for uh, and allow for uh, environmentally friendly tech to take over as far as that particular part goes. Then eventually, we would not be as oil, gas and oil uh, dependent, and utilities will go down, and the environment will get a little bit better as time goes on. Uh, at the same time. The jobs transitional program that people like Warren Mosler ha- have uh, have uh, proposed uh, would also sh- uh, sh- uh, would also set the uh, the wage uh, in the marketplace through that. That would and that, and that would bring about uh, competitiveness and in- innovation, stuff like that. Anyways, I just need to get that out as far as the part goes. I just can't believe. Let's see if I can get that again. I just can't believe that people thought this guy was freaking smart. He quite literally tried to sabotage our gas and oil in regards to that. I mean, having or uh, telling a gas producer to cut back on 10 million barrels to force prices up. That that is sabotage. That is treasonous because that's sabotaging a country that is dependent on at the time dependent on another country's oil. But then at the same time, he then uh, he did he did start selling reserves that we have here apparently that were mostly for uh, for military use, I believe, is stuff of that nature. Anyway. Hashtag learn MMT. That will give you a general understanding of the economics uh, of the of the world. Basically, uh, you get to know what countries are or not sovereign, uh, who uh, are debt uh, based countries, um, and who are forced to be debt based countries through the IMF and other. Uh, financial organization, World Bank, um, that forced people to be that be that same way. Uh, another thing, uh, I recently also uh, tried to understand the uh, Ministry for All by State uh, thing, like whole Washington. Um, I looked at that and I looked and I looked at the Gerald. Uh, oh God, not Gerald Ford, but uh, Gerald something. I forgot the last name. Um, their plan basically it was to take away and I may have I may I may misunderstand this, but uh, it was to is dependent on 
the older generation to go from uh, go from federal uh, federal based uh, Medicare Part, Part B to the state funded Medicare Part B or not state funded. I'm sorry, uh, pretty much a private version of the same thing. And uh, now, from what I saw on the website, um, it said it had the biggest risk pool. And so I had to look up and, and like, does insurance companies have risk pools? Because I know that risk pools are, or risk pools, excuse me, is something that they base the risk of the person's health or lifestyle or stuff of that nature. And uh, the rate, uh, the, the, the rate that the premium that, that they pay is based on that. Which basically you're going from, they're, you, they're trying to get people to, go from a risk pool that, that, that is paid in premiums to the government to a state-run uh, or organization within the state, because it's not, I don't think it's a, 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 a Washington state-regulated uh, organization, is what they would call a trust fund. I don't know, but what, from what I saw, that was basically just going from... Um, going from uh, federal payments to basically trust fund payments, which is probably not about are the same thing. They, they, they would be getting investments from uh, employee, uh, em employers, employees, uh, and capital gains tax. I think it was like 8.5 uh, on the website. Um, so yeah, basically it's in, they would be going from federal insurance to basically a private insurance and they want to do what they want to do in every state. I'm like, well, you're, uh, and it even said it was, uh, it was a more cost effective than most private insurance companies. It's like, if you have to say that, then there's a chance that there's a private insurance company that would do probably about the same for less than what you're offering. So anyway, that's from what I remember from the conversation. I couldn't say anymore. I'm sorry. I had to block them. It's, yeah, anyway. But yeah, I, I, I keep looking at this tweet that Warren Moser put up, that, that Donald J. Trump put up like a couple years ago. And I'm astonished. I'm astonished on how he's not in jail. I'm astonished on how people in power keep people like this from being prosecuted. Because this is, this is sabotage of a uh, of a of a country's econo uh, economy. This is that's the only way I can look at it right now. Anyway, until later on, then maybe I'll have a different point of view. But for right now, I'm seeing this as holy crap. He was literally telling one of one of the, uh, a producer of seven percent of oil to stop making as much in order to push the prices up are you fucking kidding me why would you want to vote this guy in why would you want to vote, vote uh biden in because he's not doing shit about it either as far as i know of chuck schumer him pelosi anybody else who's in power <clears throat> should be taking people like Manchin off of their uh off their committee assignments because frankly he's you know he's he's literally in coal gas and oil pockets i mean he is paid not only uh through campaign contributions but as far as i know about his family is involved in, uh in coal so he should be out in the first place uh that should be replaced by someone who at least wants to consider freaking evs or anything solar uh, and also uh, need to get uh, solar panels made here in America or take out the tariffs and, and uh, everything else in between that our taxes uh, on uh, tax, not taxes, but tax on imports from places like China, places like uh, Cuba, Venezuela, you name it. If, there, if we have put a, some sort of idiotic tax on their imports, take those off. Because that would actually invite more people to want to, or more countries to want to do business with us, uh, allowing the currency to continue to be a world currency. 
uh, in my eyes anyway. But for that to be happening, this to be freaking happening, and this to be done, this is the stupidest freaking thing I think I, I could see as far as the president fucking doing. And we're not, we're not exactly dealing with a, uh, a um, rocket scientist as it is. But anyway, I digress, as uh, someone once said. <sighs> anyway, nah, let me just kind of stop this. So if you have any questions about NMT, go to realprogressive.org. Uh, check out Macro and Cheese, both uh, here on uh, YouTube as well as on the website. Check out Real Progressives uh, on Facebook. Uh, on follow follow my Twitter. Um, I believe that will at Real Progressives in action and stuff of that nature. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, support this channel with a subscribe, uh, share it, comment, uh, be nice if you can, and uh, yeah, learn MMT. I'm sorry, but yes, learn MMT. Peace out for now.